Now, now, President Barack, you 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 mentioned his name. It comes out fluently. It's not like somebody you you, you just maybe seen once or twice. Have you ever engaged in conversation with him? Have you been influenced? Uh, we I have never engaged in conversation with him because they don't allow us to get that close. But I've met David Palufi, uh, his campaign manager, which where I've also traveled. You know, twenty seven states with Barack Obama and his campaign crew. I've uh, helped him win Indiana, which I was there for uh, three, four, three months or something. Indiana, like that. tough state. Very tough state. Uh, <laughs> it's a very tough state. Uh, I campaigned there with, with people I never knew before. We all got together and we said we're going to pull this state out for Barack. And we did an, uh, an incredible job out there. And I'm proud of it. And that's why I'm running for office now. Um, this is a double, double bridge question. You sound and look like a very young man. So, I, I mean, I see that I believe you graduated in 99, was it? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's been nine years since then. Uh, no, actually, I graduated in 98. Okay. Uh, and, and and the story from then to now, you seem like you've taken massive strides since oh, your yeah, graduation. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, I went to the University of Oregon at first. Uh, I didn't have the financial backing to stay there, so I had to leave. Um, I ventured to uh, different other schools. You know, uh, in uh, 2006, I entered. I went into a, a, a program for children's writing is which where I actually got found is the Institution of Children's Literature. Uh, I got a, a degree in that in children's literature. Uh, it's the, the education route is unlimited um, as of uh, we speak right now. And uh, I'm still pursuing it as uh, we go. Um, with oh, the, I mean, speaking of education, um, you know, reading up on you, I know that's one of your strong points as far as, you know, I believe you have a liter literacy degree or, or is it a degree in teaching? Uh, no, it's not a degree in teaching. It's a degree in literature. Okay. Which, which is from, you know, uh, it's not a physical degree. It's accumulation. Like, like let's say if I got an a AA here and an AA here, it would all accumulate to a BA in literature. So it's just mm. an accumulation, not a, a physical of uh, four years of one school. It's, Accumulation of three schools. So you put a that that seems like a lot of work in the yes. educational system to get yourself into that point. So that's why you tend to strive, I guess, more to reach more other people who have difficulty getting the finances to go to school. Correct. Um, you mentioned a very big point that we kind of overshot that you are running for office. Which office are you running for? Uh, there's two offices that I like to seek, which is the 31st District State Assemblyman. That's the main one I'm pushing for. But I'm also pushing for the governorship of New Jersey because Corzine is just not getting the things done that we need. And the reason what I mean is he's just passing bills that will actually hurt us in the long run than what it is doing now. Like, for instance, the new marijuana bill that he put out there. Mm -hmm. That bill right there alone will bring out taxes 20% higher than what it is right now. Okay. Right now, New Jersey taxes is 47%. With this bill going into place, we'll probably be at 62%. There's nobody in New Jersey that will be able to live off of that but a politician. All right. Um, most journalists tend to go into the question of what is it that the other candidate is doing wrong. I'd rather hit you with the question of what is it that you're going to do right and do better if you're given the opportunity to become a governor? If I was ever given the opportunity to become governor, I would remove property taxes for seniors over 65. This would give us a little bit of cap room that we need. Then I would issue a windfall profits tax on oil. This will generate $50 million for a three-quarter term, $150 million in three years. That would actually pull us out of this, this jam that we're in. And with my educational background and my knowledge on um, government, there is no other candidate. I'll now repeat this. There's no other candidate that knows government better than me. Okay. Um, you're also very, very young, and I don't think people want... Li How old are you? Just so anybody I just know. recently turned 30. You just recently Woo, turned 30. Young that's, 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 very, that's very young to be getting into politics, especially for a governorship. So, I mean, what well, resource... The president is 35 years of age. Very so. true. He's, the young, he's one of the youngest presidents we've had also. So... The question is, how do you feel that you'll be able to gain the resources and gain the support of the people to try to back you? And um, are you representing one of the major parties or are you independent? Uh, gaining the, the financial support is very hard for any candidate. Uh, but gaining the people's support, I think I have that much of the people's support because I've uh, gone to different cities. I have almost 800 people signing on to my petition to uh, challenge this election. Uh, 
But as the financial part, it's just that people got to, you know, see me. You know, if they see me out there, come to my rallies, you know, join my movement and place that trust in me. They'll see that I'm one serious candidate and, you know, uh, they'll probably just latch on and, and donate later. Now, we spoke a little bit off air. You, you did let me know that you're, you're, you're into more, of, not into per se, but your demographic is a little bit more of our age category. Sure, from 18 to, I would say, mid-30. Mm -hmm. um, this is a tech-savvy generation. Correct. Where can these tech-savvy young men and women find you, or how can they hear more about you? Well, everything is placed on my website, www.coaches101.org. Uh, it also has my uh, number there. If you want to text me, you can Your text actual me. actual number? My actual number is there. Hold on. I'm not going to get an assistant? You're not going to get an assistant. If you call that number, it is, you're going to get me. I may play like I am the assistant, <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting me. You're getting, Hold on. Let me extend you to Omar. That's a wise decision because you <laughs> never know. Our streamers right now are going to be looking for your number. You might get a few crazy ones, and you might get a few legit ones. So you got to sift through it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, staying on topic, we're having people communicate you in this younger generation. I mean, the best question I, I could possibly think of as a college student, and, I, and obviously this is a college radio show, what can Omar provide for the college students, at, for at least in New Jersey? Well, you know, uh, I do submit proposals to the Obama administration and there's a bill called the dream bill will it make it a lot easier for college kids to afford college uh, that bill is is installed me in Congress and I hope they you know push it through pass it through because education is really deep uh, it cost me uh, uh, a whole lot to get my education which is a hundred grand and this is why you know I'm out here promoting my book doing another uh, book which is called the next generation of leaders and I just don't want someone else to go through the same struggles of trying to be educated like I did, or pay for education like I did. Now, now offering sympathy to, to more of a younger audience, I mean, what would be your advice to someone sitting in a campus right now that's going through some financial situations and, and wants to be in a position that you're in or strives to be the next President Obama? Uh, there's so many scholarship opportunities out there, so get on the internet, you know, search it. You know, fastweb.com is a good place. Apply to at least a hundred of them, you know. Uh, let them know that you you know you're serious about getting a, a a scholarship or a grant or whatever, and just tough it out, you know, because it's better to have something than to have nothing, and that's why I, I stuck it out through the long run. All right, so I mean, so basically, if this is something you wanted, I mean, I, and I speak directly towards you when I say this, looking to become a governor cannot be an easy task. Uh, no, it's not. It's not a very easy task. So what are the daily trials and tribulations you, you've been through? Or, or I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, at least. Well, uh, well I, I'm actually more prepared for this than anybody because I've spent two years uh, campaigning for Barack Obama. It's about knocking on people's doors, you know, being invited into their homes, uh, asking them what can I do for you as a candidate, and them telling me. And I go back and I report this, and I just, you know, it dawns me. It's like, you know what, I, better, I can better help these people if I'm in office, because with my ideas, with my knowledge on government, and my ways just to get around on the internet, and my ways to get around everything else in life, I am more fit than anyone else running in this election for governor. It's too bad that the Republican side hasn't endorsed me, and it's too bad that the Democratic side hasn't endorsed me. But I have more of the people's champ behind my side. <laughs>